Welcome to Open SAP course. This is week five, deliver and operate in a well-maintained plan and unit four. In the previous unit, you have learned about monitoring plan operations. In this unit, we will talk about visual work instructions. My name is Nick Wayne, and I'm the product manager for SAP Enterprise Product Development. My focus area is visualization. SAP has a long history of supporting visualization, including the Visual Enterprise on-premises solution and cloud solution within enterprise product development. Within enterprise product development visualization, we have a number of capabilities as summarized on this slide. Visual product lifecycle and asset analytics. It's about connecting 2D and 3D visual to the backend business data in S4HANA, for example, which allows the user to query the relevant business questions from the mass data in the backend. Visual navigation allows customer to use 2D and 360 panoramic images or 3D data to define the real world assets and equipment. So basically a maintenance operator or a technician can use visualization to virtually work through their plant or facility and quickly locate and identify key assets and understand the operational environment. Visual Spares and Service is an integration of EPD visualization directly into SAP Commerce Cloud. You will learn more about this use case in the next unit. Visual Work Instruction is the focus for this unit. Basically, it allows the user to create visual work instructions from EPD visualization to show how to assemble a product on the shop floor or how to maintain some equipment installed in the field. Last but not the least, Product Model Viewer is a mobile application that allows user to access and display 3D models from EPD visualization. It allows engineers, shop floor workers, service technicians, an asset operator to view step-by-step -step 3D visual service instructions created in EPD. In addition, user is able to select the parts and view the relevant product or equipment information. As I already mentioned, visual work instructions shows how to assemble a product on the shop floor or how to maintain some equipment installed in the field. It enables the manufacturers or service provider to transform 3D product data into the interactive service instructions, which ultimately increase the service or production efficiency. Imagine if a service technician is sent to the field to fix something. He or she can see exactly what needs to be done to complete the task using 3D visual work instructions which will increase the productivity, accuracy, and ultimately customer satisfaction. Not only 3D visual work instruction can be used as assembly instruction or service procedures, it's also an effective tool for providing product training. Basically, this is the end-to-end -end workflow for visual work instructions. We have a powerful authoring tool within EPD visualization, which allows the users to enhance the 3D model to make it more realistic. In addition, user is able to configure the viewer template. As such, the relevant business data from the backend service could be displayed when a particular object is selected on the viewport. You will learn um, the detailed step-by-step -step process of creating visual working instructions over the coming slides. Okay, so the first step of creating visual working instructions is to import 3D data into EPD visualization. The input could come from any 3D mechanical CAD software. So likes of Siemens, NX, Solid Edge, CATIA, SolidWorks, Creo, and so on. We support almost all native CAD file formats in EPD visualization. Once the visual data is imported, user can navigate to the folder 
to view the visual working to view the visualizations. Once the visual data is imported, the next step is to create a new visualization structure. Because the visual work instructions is typically derived from the manufacturing bond or service bond, not engineering bond. Within enterprise product development visualization, we have the ability to basically restructure from engineering bond to any structure. And we do that through a tool called association. There are a number of ways to do association. The recommended method is through data source. Basically, a data source is defined by a URL to exposed service or API. It can be cloud or on-premises file cloud connector. And the user will not only be able to create a new visualization structure via association, but also tag each node for the visualization with appropriate global unique identifier to the backend system. It could be the material ID, it could be a product code or equipment ID. Basically, user can assign any type of usage ID to the visualization, which makes the visualization business context aware, where they can retrieve information for any node or object from any system. Step three is where user can enhance the visualization by using the authoring tool within enterprise product development visualization. For example, setting appearance properties, which user can apply different materials or change color to make the visualization look more realistic. Step four is where the user creates the actual content of visual work instructions using the animation tool. Typically, the first view is the default view, which is what would be displayed when visualization is initially loaded in the viewport. User can zoom, pan, or rotate the 3D model to update the current view. As you see on the bottom of the slide, user can add multiple views for the work instructions. Each view could represent a single step or process. For example, this selected uh, view shows how to remove ceiling. Then user will select the components to be animated. They can do this either visually in the viewport or choose from the structure browser. And they need to create an animation group by using our animation composition panel as shown on the right-hand side of the slide. Once that's done, user can create a new animation sequence the default sequence is one second, meaning the duration to finish this specific animation. User can change it what they, to what they need. There are a number of animation tools that user can leverage to animate the sequence. For example, move, rotate, scale, or change the object opacity. Once everything is completed, user just needs to publish the visualization so it will be saved. Step five is to configure the viewer template so that user can create a custom 3D user interface by persona or use case. Basically, they can change the look and feel of this viewport with no code at all. As I mentioned earlier, within EPD visualization, we have the ability to connect and display the business data from any backend systems so for example, a product engineer may want to show the product mass data from S4 HANA, whereas a service technician would need information from S Essential. The last step is basically to validate the created work instructions in the viewer, making sure the animations or annotations are displayed correctly in the configured viewer template and the correct business data is also displaying when the object is selected in the viewport. Now let me show you a demo that could help you understand better about visual work instructions. Okay, 
Uh, now I'm in the uh, live system of uh, APD visualization. As you see in the viewport, I have loaded this uh, visualization of uh, Evo valve assembly. Um, you notice there's a, a toolbar on the top, which uh, allows the user to perform some basic actions like zooming, um, zoom out, rotate, uh, pan, and, and stuff like that. Uh, there's also a, a measurement tool. So a user can utilize this to do the distance, angle, or area measurement. Um, user can also see the uh, cross-sectional um, plane um, if needed. And there's another option for user to um, change the camera positions um, if um, they want to view the a different angle of this, of this visualization. Uh, there's uh, another feature um, um, in APD visualization uh, it's called filter bar. Uh, so what it does is it allows the user to search a particular node of this visualization uh, by uh, using its name or metadata or usage ID. Okay, so once the user um, put a name of the selected part um, and the, the part will be highlighted in, in, the, in the visualization. Um, you notice that uh, there is a property panels, which basically allows the user to show uh, the, the properties of selected object. In this case, um, it's showing some cat metadata and also some tag usage ID of this um, selected uh, object. Uh, but again, this property panel is uh, highly configurable. So um, the user can, for example, show the, uh, the mass data from the, the uh, backend S4 HANA, for example. Um, so obviously, uh, this example I'm showing you, we have built uh, the visual work instruction. To view uh, that, simply click gallery, um, which you will see uh, there are a number of views uh, consist uh, for this uh, service instruction. Uh, each view represent uh, as a different step, uh, as I have uh, explained to you before. So um, if I play this uh, service instruction or visual work instruction, you notice that uh, we add some symbol, or you can even add some health and safety symbols to enrich your uh, visual work instructions if needed. In this example, we are showing how a service technician can leverage this visual working instruction to disassemble uh, the Evo valve assembly, replace the worn seal, and put everything back again. Okay, so this is a, a very simple example, but um, again, you can utilize this um, this uh, visual working instruction to create anything that uh, suits your need. Okay, let's recap what we have learned through this unit. First. We understand the business values of visual work instructions. It maximizes the first time fixed rate and increases the customer satisfaction, and also minimizes the downtime and provides the best quality service for the customers. Secondly, we look at some of the key solution capability within enterprise product development visualization. The first tool is association which basically allows the user to restructure from an engineering bomb to a service bomb. Another one is authoring tool, where user can enhance the visualization, generated exploded view, and visual working instructions, and etc. And we also learn the process of creating the visual working instructions and EPD visualization. And this is the end of this unit. I hope you enjoy this course and look forward to seeing you in the next Open SAP course.